Good morning. We have been studying blood samples of individuals with long COVID now for nearly a year and a half, and we have discovered that patients with this condition suffer from increased levels of inflammatory molecules, but they're not found in the typical place where you would presume that they would be. We found them entrapped inside persisting and circulating microclots um, that, that are in circulation. So the issue with many of the diagnoses that's currently uh, being done on these patients are if, if the patients go to a pathology laboratory, uh, the results come back within the healthy um, ranges. So uh, the reason for that was that we discovered that it's actually not in the soluble part of the blood, mm. uh, but actually entrapped in microclots. As I mentioned in the intraprof, uh, women and healthcare workers are at the highest risk of long COVID. Why? Healthcare workers in particular, obviously, is, is um, very well known that they are exposed to high levels of um, uh, virus and they have struggled severely with acute COVID. So that is one of the important dilemmas that we have is that globally, our healthcare workers are struggling and many, many of them have, have um, had acute COVID um, and they are now struggling with long COVID. Uh, the issue with, with um, females are still under investigation. It's not, it must be said, it's not only um, uh, women that struggle, males also, but in, in another issue that is uh, very much not looked into is the fact that children are also severely affected. So it's not um, just uh, healthcare workers or, or females. It is actually the whole population. Possible long-term effects of long COVID, Professor? Long COVID can uh, have chronic consequences for the, the people that survive acute COVID. We have noted that individuals that recover from acute COVID can struggle as long as 23 months or longer um, since the first wave of, of um, acute COVID mm -hmm. in South Africa and globally. People have been struggling with symptoms of long COVID. Now, the issue with that is with this microclots in circulation, the, the patients actually struggle from a wide uh, variety of symptoms. And all of this can result in uh, the cells of the body not getting enough oxygen. Mm. The, that's a term that we call hypoxia. And that might be one of the reasons that we see such a wide different variety of symptoms. Now, if we do not have a diagnosis, a proper diagnosis, and if we do not have um, treatment, then we can, this can have dire consequences, not only for the patients, but also for our economy. Organs of the body that might suffer most? Currently, we see symptoms uh, related to brain fog, concentration issues, so the brain definitely affected, but then all, all sorts of other organ systems, uh, right through from the liver, and even your fingers, your hands, there's a term that is used, COVID toes, that is also seen in long COVID. Uh, so people um, have a wide variety of symptoms, but um, the brain fog is definitely and a very important and very worrying symptom because it will mean that the individual suffering from long COVID will not function properly mm -hmm. as, as before acute COVID. Prof, as I let you go, long COVID is such a... Uh, it's a generic term. I'd like to put some specificity into it. How long are we talking when we say long COVID? Does the person recover at times and then immediately uh, suffers the effects? Or is it one long condition that goes on up until when? Unfortunately, that seems to be the case in some individuals. So some people recover fully from acute COVID and they don't have any conditions afterwards or any complaints. However, between 25 and 30% of individuals 
actually just never recover from acute COVID. So it's just a continuation of symptoms that just perpetuate. So if we do not get diagnosis and if we do not get um, treatment and if we do not follow something like a, a, a protocol where we could implement clinical trials in South Africa and globally, we will be in really severe trouble. So luckily we are working with various researchers in South Africa and uh, globally, um, doctors and uh, researchers to try to establish uh, clinical trials. That is our only hope because if not, if we do not do that, it will turn into a chronic condition with millions of people permanently debilitated. Just another question, Prof. I know I said I would let you go, but uh, interesting now, it, it's just come into my mind and that is that people who are suffering long COVID, you've just said that some of them simply never recover. Vaccinating is that now out of the question because this person is almost in a permanent state of COVID-19 infection? Most definitely not. That is definitely not what, what we suggest. So we must look into and study this further. Um, and the issue is if we, if we do not vaccinate our population, then we will sit with co acute COVID for a very, very long time. So the answer, the, the short answer is we simply don't know the effects of vaccination on long COVID patients. We need to study that uh, for sure. But, uh, but vaccination still is our number one ally against acute COVID and eventually preventing people going into long COVID. Professor Risha Pretorius, she is uh, the head of the physiological sciences at uh, the University of Stellenbosch. Thank you very much for your time and uh, insights. Very interesting uh, topic indeed and uh, investigations ongoing as to uh, possible relief for those of us who are suffering uh, from long COVID. To the